Hello and welcome to the 100 Indie Artists Project. This is a music project designed for and by independent artists to help you firstly get to know some of the incredible musicians in your community, as well as get to know some insights and some tools that you can take on board with your own musical marketing journey. Tell us about who you are as an artist and your background. So um, my name is Riley Cooper and a little bit about me, um, you know, as an artist and my background. So um, basically I started making music back in 2020 during the lockdown. Um, and I'm going to be honest, it wasn't the best music ever or just in general uh, of my work. I made a song called Bread, like that was one of the first songs I made, which was about getting the bread. So, you know, not the most sophisticated work that I could have put out there. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it was, I was making music, I was getting stuff out there. So that's kind of what mattered most to me. Um, all that stuff has been taken down now, you can still find it, but I, um, it's not really the direction I wanted to go in. So kind of from there, um, yeah, I found a producer, really good producer. Uh, his name is Yum, if you want to check him out. Um, but like, yeah, so I started making music with him. My first song that I made with him was Lucifer. And I didn't really have an idea of kind of where I wanted to go with my music. It was kind of just, I like this style of song. I, I like the sound kind of gave some references and then we went from there and then we made Lucifer and you know I didn't expect it to I mean it's not really blown up but get as big as it did but it was really cool that that happened so yeah I'm really grateful um in general my background um was always really into acting and film never really cared much for music and then I started learning bass back in like 2018 because I just thought it sounded cool. And then kind of from there, I was like, you know what? If I'm playing bass, I need to learn how to sing for some reason. I, I don't know why I kind of connected those dots. But anyway, I um, started learning how to sing, did singing lessons and then tried to do guitar lessons. And then, you know, lockdown 2020, lockdown 2021 kind of cut that all off. So this year I've gone into playing guitar and then hopefully get into producing my own music down the line once again. But um, that's not immediate. But yeah, and then also just as an artist, I like to spread good messages, important messages. I think if, you're, if you have this platform to make music, then use it effectively. I mean, at least in my opinion. And my way of effect effectiveness is to um, basically just write about things that are important uh, for everyone. And I think things that are relat relatable, I try not to make my songs too specific to me. Um, you know, I like to generalize them so then everyone can just relate to them. But yeah, that's kind of me. What musical projects are you working on right now? Uh, currently I'm releasing an album in like two months. So I'm very excited about that. It's completely finished. Um, but yeah, it's my first album, first album. I released another one like a couple years ago, but won't talk about that one. Um, but yeah, it's my first album release and I'm very excited for it. Uh, I'm also releasing a new song on June 18th, um, which is called Mad. Very different style to my other songs. I do rapping in it. Not really a rapper, but I like to test myself. I think it turned out well, so hopefully um, people like it. But yeah, and then the album, very, it's called Diversify, Songs for a Night Drive. Very diverse, as you know, the name kind of says, but it's, it's a mixed album, but everything's my style. Some very important songs in there for me, important messages. Um, but other than that, I mean, I have second album planned, not exactly sure for the release date, but that most likely will come out next year. And then other than that, I mean, I think I might take a break from music, you know, because I was like, it's been music, music, mu music, music, music for like a couple of years now. 
or I've been really pumping out songs and making songs and it gets to a point where you get a bit burnt out, um, you know, making songs all the time. And it's hard to write about stuff all the time. Like I found I was writing about things. I was like, am I really that passionate about this? Or am I just writing to make a song? Um, so I kind of got to the point where I, I'm going to take a bit of a break. Also, people probably don't want Riley Cooper songs all the time. I think it's more effective to take breaks and then come back. So then it creates that interest. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm working on. There has been an idea for a third album, but that is very distant. I've kind of, I'm, I'm in the first planning stages of that, but it's not really anything at this point. So maybe, maybe not, but yeah. Where do you feel that you're at in your musical journey right now? And where would you like to get to? All right, so I feel like right now with my music journey, um, very much in the first stages of it, like not even broke out in the slightest bit. You know, I've been releasing properly since January 2021. And I don't know, I feel like I've, you know, done some things that I have wanted to do and I never thought I would do, reached some milestones already. But for me, I'm always trying to climb and I'm always trying to do it in, um, you know, ways that I find are successful. Like, I think everyone has their own measure of success. And I, I think so far I've been pretty successful, like for someone who started out last year. I mean, I'm, I'm in a position right now that I never thought I'd be in in a year where I have people who are genuinely, genuinely interested in what I'm releasing. And um, it's very validating and I really appreciate it. Like everyone that listens to my music, it's just, it's, um, it doesn't go, you know, without thought. Like it's, it's very, I am very um, grateful for it, but yeah, for me, I'm trying to get my messages out there. I, I don't really mind, you know, I, I think where I want to get to eventually, probably, you know, at a point where I can make a living off of music and, you know, perform, but I don't need to be like the biggest star, you know, number one on Spotify. For me, I just want, you know, to have a fan base of people who really appreciate my music, appreciate the messages. Um, and just to like help people, I mean, it's nothing better than when I get like a message of how someone like my song really touched them and you know, that's coming from a really small artist. So it'd be nice to be a bigger artist and have my music, you know, be effective for a lot more people. Um, yeah, but I think, I don't know, I, I don't really find myself being, you know, a performer or whatever. I, I really enjoy writing songs. I enjoy the whole production of songs. I could definitely see myself kind of going more into that, being maybe a producer um, or a writer, which, you know, it's hard to break out in any form of music, but I would like to, you know, take that step, still make my own music, but it's not my, I don't want to just be pigeonholed to one thing is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, I'll try to branch out, do different things, but it's kind of where I want to be eventually. But yeah, I'm happy where I am right now. And I think it's a, you know, it's kind of a slow building thing. It's not really something where I expect to be the biggest person, you know, the biggest musician ever within a year. Um, you know, and I think, yeah, I'm I'm happy with whatever timeline happens. It's I don't really have a timeline in my head of it has to happen during this time or at this time. You know, whenever it happens, it happens. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my perspective on it. What do you love most about being an independent artist? I, a lot. I, I, I love the fact that it's, you know, very, everything's like you. Like I don't have to go through someone. It's all my decisions. It's very independent, as the name says. Um, and, you know, I can make my music. Like I don't have to think about, you know, like what's going to be successful or what's going to make a lot of money as you know people that work at labels they have to kind of make things that will definitely get big but for me i just want to make stuff that i like and that i think sounds cool and i like to make different stuff i don't like to stick with the same sound 
um, for any song, really. I like to switch it around. And I think that's what I like about being independent. Um, cause you know, if you're signed with like a record company or, or a label, whatever, it's, you don't really get, you, you get a say, but it's never like the final say. You have to really discuss things. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I love about being an independent artist. What do you find the most challenging about being an independent artist? There is a lot of challenging stuff about being independent. Like I said before, um, you kind of, you know, you have to do everything yourself. Um, a lot of it's like, you never know if something's the right choice. Like you can't get that professional opinion on marketing or, you know, what song to release when. I mean, you can do a lot of your own research, but I don't really, I can't be bothered, I guess. So I tend to just do what I think is right and what I like as a fan of other artists. Um, but yeah, and also it's, it's very expensive being independent, like, because everything's your own money. Like when you're with a label, like spend millions on a music video and you're fine. When you're like independent, you have to do everything yourself. Um, there's obviously cheaper ways to do things, but yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult. I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat it or anything. It's not fun most of the time, but it's rewarding to be able to put out what you want to put out. And it's um, it's exciting. I don't know. It's kind of thrilling being independent because it's like everything you do is your own work. Obviously, you get help um, if you want to, but at the end of the day, it's kind of you. It's your business. Um, if something blows up or, you know, works, that was your idea and that's validating. So... Yeah, I mean, I would say it's unique as an experience. It, it is like running your own company. Well, not company, that's a bit, you know, um, extreme. Oh my God, my voice, extreme. But it's, um, you know, it's cool. It's, it's like you're running your own business, kind of. Not making much money, but you're still doing it. What has been your experience in marketing and promoting your music? Man. Uh, where do I start? It's not been great. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I spent too much money and got not much results. So I think that's kind of the whole broad perspective of it. Um, I think my worst marketing moment, you know, I thought that getting this particular TikToker, I'm not going to say who they are, but I thought spending a fair amount of money to get them to promote my song would work. And then they made a video that was not the best and my song it did nothing so um you know you're gonna make mistakes like that when with marketing i would say with marketing don't spend a lot of money um because i i thought i have to spend all my money to really get this to work and that's not true um i think use every platform available to you and be annoying like to promote your music, you just need to be annoying. You need to really like post about it all the time. I struggle with that because I don't want to like lose people. And I feel like by overbearing, like being overbearing and posting all the time, I could lose some people. So I struggle with that. But I think that's what you need to do because people forget really easily. And if you're not posting all the time about your music, then people just aren't going to care. Um, and they're not going to remember you. So... I think it's important to do that and create engaging content, like get people to help you. I, I get people to help me. Like I've got a friend who makes edits for me and I really appreciate her. She, um, really thoughtful with them and, you know, really helpful. And I think it's really good to find friends like that who want you to be successful. Like they, they're not doing it for anything for themselves. They're doing it for you. And that's why I really appreciate her. I really appreciate my producer um, because, you know, when you find people that want to do it for you, then that's best with marketing because when you find someone who's just trying to do it for, you know, for themselves, like they want to get money from you so they'll market for you, that's when it gets kind of not the best. Um, and I think a place where I've had my most success with marketing is, 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 geez, is Instagram, man. Um, I don't know why Instagram just works. I, 
I promoted on there and got a couple followers from it, um, which is a lot for when you're marketing on your own and you don't have a lot of money. Um, and TikTok, I'll be honest, TikTok's a stretch. Like, I think if you have really, really engaging content and like the, like, I think everyone has this like perceived idea that what they create is the best. It's, you know, it's just a thing that if you created something, you think it's amazing, but you know, you got to really think about like, is this, is my song good enough to break through? And usually it's not. So you have to kind of create, if you're doing TikTok, you have to kind of create like a trend to go with it or just something that's engaging about it. Cause if it's just a song, most of the time, unless it's already kind of popular, it's not just going to randomly get popular. So that's kind of my advice on that. Um, but yeah, my overall experience, it's not been like crazy good. It's been like kind of middle of the road where sometimes I've had success and sometimes I've had like really, really, really bad failure. So yeah, I, I think just keep an open mind with marketing and promotion, but you know, keep your budget low. Like I just have a budget and stick to it because uh, if you spend a lot of money and it doesn't work out, it's not very good. What has been one thing you've learned along the way that has been the biggest game changer for you in music marketing? I'm gonna I'm gonna say finding people to work with. Um, I really thought that I could just do it all on my own, and you know that's kind of cool. But it's hard to learn how to do every aspect, like how to learn how to edit videos, you know, make edits, you know, make really engaging like covers for your music. And then making the music, writing the music, it's a lot of work to do everything. So honestly, I think finding people to work with, and even if you have to pay them, you know, like a small amount, it's worth it in the long run if you really, if you're really passionate about music. Um, but I think ask your friends, like if your friends around you might have talents that you don't know about. Um, with my friend, I didn't know that she could make really, really good edits. And then I found out, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna ask her, and then she was down to make some for me. And I, as I said, I really appreciated that. And now we have this working relationship to do this. So I think it's important to just ask people for help. And it's the same if you're making like a music video or promotional video or whatever for your music, ask people around you first, because they're probably gonna wanna help you out. Rather than having to go out and pay people, you know, to help you out and do things for you, just do it yourself and ask people around you to help and most of the time they will. So I think when it comes to marketing, promoting, just, yeah, ask people around you for help. They might have skills you don't know about. Also, Instagram, it's the best social media to promote on, in my opinion. What has been your experience with building a fan base and what have you learned along the way? Um, so my experience with building a fan base, it's been a slow burn, I'm not gonna lie. It's hard to find fans that are really committed. Like, you'll get people who follow you and stuff, but it's hard to find those fans that will really, like, actively, um, support you. I got really lucky. I had a fan recently that messaged me and she told me that she you know, really like my music and she wasn't going anywhere. She's going to stick and like stick with me and, and um, support me. And like that means the world, like things like that, like people that really, really l like, like your image and like your music that much that they're willing to stick by you. Even if you're a small artist, like you really got to appreciate these people because they don't really owe anything to you at all. Like she doesn't even live in Australia. She's so, you know, she doesn't know me at all, but she's going to do that for me. And she's not the only one. There's other people, but she's the one that comes to mind. And I really appreciate that. And she knows who she is. So thank you to you. But um, yeah, I think building a fan base, you need to just interact with them. Uh, don't get this like idea of like, oh, well, they're, you know, because some people go all Beyonce mode and they're like, I need to follow no one back and I got to keep this image that I'm like up here. It's like, that's not the way to go. Um, I think it's, it's good to interact with people. Um, 
you know, because who knows, like that person could really help you down the line. Um, and they're helping you right now anyway by supporting your music. So I think no matter if you have 10 fans, you know, a thousand fans or one million fans, treat them all the same, you know, like that is still 10 people who are supporting you and who really like you. So, you know, always be grateful for it and, you know, give back to your fans. Like if they're supporting you, then, you know, work hard for them. I think it's, it's obviously, it goes without saying, but like give them good stuff, give them a reason to like you and support you. And, you know, just, yeah, interact with them. And I think just try things out. You know, for me, I don't want my, you know, the Riley Cooper experience to get boring. So I try things out, different things. I try to do lots of polls, um, let people engage with me. And it seems to work. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess what I've learned is just let it come to you. I wouldn't try to actively search for fans. You know, don't try to chase it. Just try to attract it. If you make good music, if you do good work, people are going to want to support you. When you go searching for that, um, it's not very endearing. So, yeah, I mean, just let it happen how it happens. And, you know, work as hard as you would for 10 fans as you would for a million fans is what I'm trying to say. Um, Because they're still supporting you. So you should give them, you know, that same effort back. Earning an income within music can be very challenging and often requires a diverse source of income streams. What are some of the streams of income you have relating to your music? So income, I don't really earn much from music. Um, I'm still in school, so, you know, I can't really just drop everything and really hit the ball of music. Um, but I guess for me, my biggest source of income would just be streams, which is not that much anyway, but, um, you know, once you get bigger as an artist, obviously you can start making merch. I've, I've kind of toyed with the idea of merch before, but it feels like it would just cost more to make than that I would make back. So I kind of just didn't go ahead with that. But I think it's important to always be trying to think of ways to make money. But, you know, music's not always about making money. I mean, I think most musicians hopefully aren't in it just, you know, to become really big one day and make millions. Um, I've always been in music for the creative process and just to make music. I really couldn't care less about earning money from it. Um, I think with music, it's important to have something else. Like I, I don't, I'm not discouraging people from fully like going with music and that's all they do and they're really working hard to make that a career. I think that's very admirable, but I feel like it's important to kind of have a side hustle, you know, maybe have music as a side hustle or do music and have another side hustle, you know? Um, But yeah, I mean, my only really stream of income is from streams at the moment. I would like to get out there and start performing, but I think it's very hard to get paid for performing when you're, you know, first starting out. But, you know, a lot of people, like, that I've talked to, they just make music from, I mean, they make money from, like, just being, like, a background musician at, like, a wedding. Like, someone who just plays in the background at, like, a function or something. And no one's really listening to them, but they get a lot of money from that. So, I think with music, is. If you're going to make money, it's probably not going to be in the ways that you see like Harry Styles making money where it's like goes on a tour and he, you know, makes like a million t-shirts and that's all his money. I feel like when you're at this stage of like in, like being an independent artist, it's going to be streams. And if it's not streams, it's going to be just going out there and doing some gigs or whatever and trying to make a name for yourself. Um... And if you have a big enough fan base, just ask them what they would like. You know, if you made merch, would they support it? I've asked before, not had an overwhelming response, so I just didn't do it. Um, 
and yeah, and if you're independent, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go like fully into music until you had like a decent fan base where you could be like, yeah, I could definitely like make a living off of this. I think it's better to just like do it as a hobby and, you know, have a, another job until you feel like you could really just stick with music. But that's my opinion. You don't have to take it, you know, just do what you want to do, I guess. But that's kind of my experiences from it. What advice would you give to an artist that's watching or listening to this who is beginning to embark on their own independent musical journey? I would say just be prepared for some underwhelming responses. Like I, when I first started making music, I thought like, man, I'm going to blow up with my first release and I'm going to be the biggest star ever and I'm going to, you know, make a career out of music. And that can happen but it's so unlikely. Um, so just be prepared to like, have some music's really like, have some music releases really not do well, or like not be that successful. And I think you can get this idea that like, a song's gonna be really good and then it comes out and it just doesn't do as well as you, th as you thought. I think don't be discouraged by that and always stick true to your music. If you really like something, then you know, stick by that. Don't try to like, if people don't like it, then that's just not that style. Like someone's always gonna find, like your mu your music's always gonna find someone. Like there's a person for every style of music. And I think it's just finding your, like, your people. Um, and yeah, so don't be discouraged if you're promoting your music and people don't like it because always, there's always someone who's gonna like it. And I think also work with other people. Don't try to do everything on your, on your own. I mean, you can do some stuff on your own, but I think it's good to have other people's opinions. Um, and don't be try, don't try to be too exclusive with your music, like get family to hear it or, you know, before you release it, like get a friend to listen to it, get their opinion. Um, you don't always have to agree their opinion, but at least you can know what, how people might react to it. Uh, and yeah, work with people. Like I said before, like ask your friends, maybe they have some talents that you don't know about, or maybe they do have talents you know about and you can ask them to help out. Um, and then create that working relationship. And I think always just be trying to be different and also like, don't try to try to be fresh is what I'm trying to say. Like, I think if you, you get a bit stale, if you, um, keep repeating and doing the same thing. So, you know, try to embark on different things. Like, you know, I would say with your music, if you like, don't try to stick to one thing. I know like some people think like, well, you know, I'm a, I'm an indie artist, so I just got to keep making indie music. But people like change Pe people like, and even if it's like, okay, for this one, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a rock artist, but I'm going to have like a funky guitar in the song. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that's just what I'm saying. Like it's try things out, see if they work. I think for me, um, I've had a lot of success from making lots of different types of music. And then you're kind of catering to a lot of different people, but also don't try to lose who you are as an artist. Like keep it your style, but you know, do some different stuff with it. But at the end of the day, make sure it's true to you. Um, and I think also, as I said before, appreciate any support you have. Like, don't be discouraged if you are releasing an album to two, two fans or 20 fans. Like, you still got 20 people there that are going to really support you. And, you know, I, I would also say it's obviously the general thing, but don't give up on your music because there are some people who, you know, released for years and years and then kind of gave up and then their songs blew up randomly. I think it's just, you got to stay with it. And then also don't fully dive into music. I, I'm lucky where I'm young, so I can, you know, I don't really need to worry about the whole career aspect of things. Like I do, but I don't. But if you're someone who really wants to make music, just go for it, you know? I would say stick with, you know, other career options. Don't just like quit everything and go for music unless you know you can really like make a living out of it. 
but yeah, that's kind of my spec perspective of it. Uh, I hope I helped out someone who wants to get into the industry. Um, also performing, just perform a lot. If you're, if you're nervous performing, I am too. You just got to get out and do it. It's the only way to get used to it. It, it sucks. It's really hard, but it's also really rewarding and people are always going to respond well. Like you might get the fair few people who are, you know, not very nice, but that's always going to happen. And that's another thing. If you get people who are putting you down, just try not to let it get to you. Uh, I've had people do it to me. And I think if you let it get to you, then there's probably not the industry for you. I mean, like it can, you can get upset about it, but I think if you're going to let it just crush you, you know, then that's probably, it's probably not the best thing for you to go into. Cause there's always going to be someone who's not going to like your stuff. But I think for me, it's like, as long as you like what you're doing, and as long as it's true to what you want to do, then who cares what people think about it? So yeah, I hope you get um, gain something out of this, even if you don't want to be a musician and you just wanted to watch this for some reason. Um, thank you. And I hope you have a good day. I hope uh, you get everything you want out of anything, even if it's not music. Um, just go for it.